Michael Huntington, everybody. Let's bring in Stetson John. Look at that hair. Look at that Stetson right there. Looking damn good, my friend. Looking damn good. Sure. Test your microphone if you don't mind. Yep. Does it sound okay? Yep. I'll get you to move a little bit closer to it if you don't mind. Let's see if I can. There we go. See, hold on. I got an idea. Let's see here. Is that a little better? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. All right, cool. All right. We're good. I'm excited about this. I even got a theme song for you. Oh, wow. I, yeah, you've got a theme by, by, song. By the way, man, you got to tell Bumblefoot that when I come on late to your show, I uh -huh. actually rewind it just so I can listen to that intro song. Isn't it great? Oh, it's fantastic. You know, the one thing that I will always say that I have going for this show is I, and I'll argue with anybody, I think we got the best intro ever. I, Ever. I could not agree more. And, you know, the thing, what's funny is that, you know, I, 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 you know, I thought about it before, but I never really thought I'd get into this world at all. But when I heard your intro, it really hit me how important an intro is to setting the right mood and, and also creating a, a, almost an addictive sort of pattern for the, for the consumer to actually like, you look forward to hearing it. It's, it's like a, it's like a dinner bell, you know? Oh yeah. You know, I can be in the crappiest of moods. And then all of a sudden, when I hear that song come on, Little Brother is watching, it's like, boom, I'm there, yep. I'm in, I'm ready, I'm in the zone, let's make it happen, and let's kick some ass, you know? Yep, agreed. Well, and that, that song is so perfect per for you, too, because it has, a, it has kind of a hockey feel to it. Like, it, it's a lot like the opening theme song for the Sharks. Like it, it, it totally makes me think of like a, like a, like getting like a team ready to go out and like take it to the ice. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. I agree. I agree. Except Bigfoot's tougher. Yeah. Big Sasquatch. Uh, got this stupid moth. Studied it, a little bit. It picked me off in the head. You, you realize, Dave, that, that, that they, they know how you feel and they oh, spread yeah. it around and now they're coming. They're coming to you for entertainment. They're, oh, they're, yeah. They're all going to start coming at you now. Bastards. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Bim Jim, I want to hear that story, man. You know what I'm going to do? Uh, I'm going to try something here. I'm feeling a little rebellious because we have the brand new uh, segment tonight with John coming on. You know what I'm going to do is, let's see, we are book solid right now. Where is the 19th? I thought we had somebody for the 19th. A week from tonight. All right. We'll make it happen here. I swear we had somebody for the 19th. This is supposed to be full. <laughs> um, oh, this is weird. My schedule changed on me. Um, so weird. Who the hell was next Monday? I'll have to figure it out because I got nothing on the weekends here either. I don't know what the hell happened to my schedule. Oh, well, we'll figure it out. Um, I'm going to do open lines. Everybody's experiences. And what I'll do is I'll put the link in the chat room and you guys can come on and tell your stories. We haven't done one of those in a long time. So let's do that. Long, long time. Yeah, and I'm surprised how well that works with StreamYard, too. Yeah, it's nice and easy. Nice and easy. Seriously, I don't know what the hell happened to my schedule, but um, I wonder if I go there. No. Well, for the weekend shows, could those could those objects also been assigned to someone else, like yeah. you, and, and basically you didn't you lost visibility to it or something? No idea. We'll figure it out. Here we go. I wouldn't explain Monday. Hold on, John.
We rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Space Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Really do appreciate earning your listening ears. Want to remind you that if you've missed portions of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram spaced out radio show now we're starting a brand new feature tonight it is called the unbiased ufo report where every monday wednesday and friday john hudson is going to join us and give us the update on the latest ufo news that is traveling around the internet around ufo twitter and around the world john welcome to the show Thank you, Dave. Happy to be here. We're glad to have you here. Now, you want to start off with Daniel Sheehan tonight. Well, actually, Danny and uh, and also Elizondo, because uh, they both made some pretty interesting statements tonight on uh, on Fade to Black. Okay, what happened there? Well, I mean, first off, I, I, I you know maybe I didn't uh, maybe I didn't pay attention to the announcement, but I thought it was just going to be Sheehan. So I was actually quite surprised when when Elizondo came on in the beginning. And uh, Elizondo was uh, was fairly uh, talkative, and basically what immediately came up in the conversation was this story about this 23-minute long video that's been going around, which I assume you've heard about. And uh, and you know Elizondo was definitely you know his normal protective self when it came to you know probing questions and so forth, but he actually gave a surprising amount of detail. So for example, he he clearly very quickly admitted that he's seen the video himself, that it was something that he saw while he was part of ATIP. Um, he admitted that, uh, you know, he gave like a cool little story and that he basically said that when he originally got the video, he sent it off to um, to basically what's called an ISR group, which is uh, an intelligence uh, surveillance reconnaissance group, which is like a separate group that does analysis. And he didn't tag it at all. He just sent them the video as is. And when he got the video back from them, the, the message that he got from them was that UFO video. So, you know, without making any very declarative statements, he was, you know, really communicating that this group, you know, had a fair amount of confidence what they were looking at. Was, and, there, was there any chance or any mention of if that video may come public? Yeah, so basically what he said is, is that he, he certainly would not expect it to leak unintentionally. He said that the, the video was classified at a level um, because of, of where it was taken and what other um, assets were involved while it was taken. Uh, he was very he, he was very careful about how he he worded. Um, uh, you know, he called it like an official collection um, a collection system instead of even declaring like what sort of vehicle was actually collecting the data. Uh, but basically what he said was, was that um, because uh, it was it was part of what um, was seen by uh, by the Congress as part of the classified um, report that he sincerely hoped and, and personally had some had some faith that it would eventually be released. But he said wow. it wouldn't be released by accident. It wouldn't be released by a, a leak. It would have to be released through official means. Now, do you, th um, do you think that entire 23 minutes would be released or we'd get maybe a 10 to 15 second snippet of it? You know, that's hard to say because he, he was very careful about, you know, uh, how he described the content of the video. What he did say was that it was a it was a very uh, he used some pretty specific words. He said it was extremely compelling, uh, very definitive and very perplexing. Because he said that when you were looking at it, you'd be looking at it for a minute and you'd think, okay, now I know what I'm looking at. And then it would change and then you'd be unsure again. And he said it was so dynamic that essentially they weren't even confident as to whether it was one object or multiple objects. But he did admit that the object was large enough to hold several humans. But he wouldn't talk about the shape of it. He wouldn't talk about um, you know, much else about it. Uh, he did. He did say point blank that it was not tic tac shaped. So he he did clarify that. But you know he he was clearly 
he, he clearly felt that this video was a, a definitive video. That essentially, if you see this video, it, it, it pretty much sets the stage and, and, and kind of lays it out very point blank. Unbelievable. And it's probably one of those videos that we will never, ever see. And our hearts are going to be broken about it because it will live there in myth and infamy straight on. Let's move on to another topic because one of the things that you wanted to talk about was there's been a lot of talk about the history of UFOs. Oh, her, well, you, Dave, oh, if I can add one more fact real sure. quick. Um, when, when Sheehan came on, uh, there was two important things that came out. One was that uh, Elizondo mentioned that when they met with the inspector general, the inspector general team said that they had no doubts that he was head of ATIP and they wanted to get that on the table at the beginning of the meeting. And, and Lou basically, you know, dropped that and, and said, you know, when, when Sheehan comes on, have him verify that. And, and, and Sheehan did, he, he basically said, yes, they, they said there was no question in their mind as to Lou's role with an ATIP. But the weird thing that came out was that, because, uh, you know, we've gotten from some pretty reliable sources the details talking about the fact that the classified portion was, uh, you know, 70 to 73 pages, that there was 14 videos. Uh, well, the 14 videos stood. What, what, what Danny Sheen reported tonight was that the actual complete classified report with the annex of the classified report. So there were classified report with the annex was actually 400 pages. Wow, which that's the first I've heard that anywhere. Um, he was he was questioned about that, and he said, "Yes, I, I know that there's been other numbers thrown out. I know that some of that came from uh, Stephen Bassett trying to trying to you know uh, get feelers out and get a sense for how long it was." Um, but he claimed it was 400 pages. And what I found very interesting about this is that it, in in the in the DoD world, there isn't just there isn't just you know classified and unclassified. There's classified and within classified, there's there's secret, there's top secret, uh, and then there's top secret, you know, SCI. And so part of me was was kind of wondering if the report that Congress got was considered secret, does that then imply that there's also a top secret report that would go into even more detail? And so part of me wonders if this might have been an indication for that. I mean, I don't know that for sure by any means, but if, if we're getting from reliable sources that there was a 73 page report and Danny's then saying there's a 400 page report, does that imply that there's a 400 page top secret report and a 73 page secret report and a nine page unclassified report? And you know, that's just my, that's my guesswork there. But I, I was looking for a way to explain why Danny would come up with 400 and be so confident in that number. And we would have gotten that, that 70 to 73 number from, you know, very reliable sources like, like Science Bob. Absolutely. And we will have to stay on top of that. Let's move on because you wanted to talk about historians and the history of UFOs on this as well. Yeah. So today I was on a, I was listening to a panel um, that was, was being done and, and, um, and, you know, there were some good names on the panel. There were, uh, Melinda was on there and, and, uh, and Grant and Dolan and, and, uh, and, you know, when someone like you has, has an opportunity to interview any one of them, uh, you know, typically, you know, what you get and, and why I like to listen is you, you get to talk about their latest research, right? You get to talk about what they're excited about right now, right? What they're working on. And uh, because there's so many new people getting into the field um, and because so many people doing the interviews are, are also very new to the field, um, this very quickly became um, a, basically a history lesson about the Avery. And uh, which, you know, is fine. And, and, you know, I actually, you know, there were probably two or three things that I learned about the Avery that I didn't know before, I guess. But, um, you know, it was, you know, and it just, it, it kind of made me laugh because one, all I kept thinking was, my goodness, if, if I had a chance to interview those three people, the, you know, that's the last thing I'd want to be talking about because that's stuff I can get anywhere. But it also it also speaks to the fact that because there are so many new people into the field, I mean, I only got into this six years ago and the amount of books I've had to read, the amount of, of podcasts and, and you, I mean, the amount of, of, of real work it takes to to get just a little bit, you know, savvy on this topic is severe and so for all the new people 
um, you know, there's a possibility that this kind of history lessons are needed. But um, to me, it was kind of like a wow, you know, you got some you got some real, you know, bright people with the, some you know, some heavy hitters, you know, and, 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 you know, you're, you're basically getting a, a history lesson. And I, I think it's going to be common, uh, you know, but I, I think it was, a, it was a little bit interesting, you know? Very cool. Now, apparently earlier this weekend that just passed, a new member of the USS Nimitz came out saying that they saw the Tic Tac. What do you know about that? Well, so what was interesting was that's that's how I that's how I heard it originally as well. But when I actually read the the article by by Ryan uh, by Ryan, um, what what became clear was this was actually a, a, a separate case. This was on the um, the Vince. Uh, oh man, the name of the ship's now the Vincent uh, fa failing me. Yeah, and so that's a different carrier, right? It's a Nimitz class carrier, which the made Carl Vincent. Sort of confusion. Yeah, but but it's a Carl Vincent carrier, and so that's a that's a different that's a different carrier group, and uh, it was still a very interesting story because what happened was the guy saw an underwater um, uh, UAP. Um, he he likes to sit on the deck and and stare into the water, and he he sees all sorts of things, squid and whales, and, and he does this to kind of relax. And he was doing this, and he saw what he said was a kind of a, a tic tac shaped object dart into his vision and then dive down very quickly and it but it was very distinct and it, and it, it kind of blew him away um but you know it was not actually on the nimitz it was on a nimitz class carrier and while he did report it the report was not welcomed and at least from the from the article that ryan wrote there was no indication that there was no there, there was any telemetry or anything else gathered and so unfortunately I mean, it's still a very interesting story, but it doesn't have any sort of the weight that we have on the other ones because there's no additional telemetry that came with the sighting. Now, with this uh, latest sighting that is coming out, do we know when it happened? Uh, yes. Yeah, so basically, this guy um, served... Um, uh, he... Uh, oh, you know, I, I, I apologize. I got too many numbers bouncing around in my head. But um, you know, he he basically uh, got out, I believe, in 2010, and so I believe it was in 2000. It was in no, you. I think actually now that I think about it, I think he got out in 2015, and, and this was in 2014. Because what he said was that when he initially reported, the guy laughed at them and basically said, "People see a lot of stuff at sea," you know, um, and uh, and so he basically kept it to himself. And then it was after Fravor. And, and everyone else came out about their stories that then he felt empowered. So basically it, it, it was a sighting that happened before, you know, before basically the, the you know, the 2017 announcement. But, um, you know, I'm trying to, uh, you know, I apologize. I, it, I thought I had that in my notes, but essentially it, it, it was a case that did happen before um, the Nimitz case was released, but it, he's only reported it outside. He's only reported it since getting out of the Navy. And um, and he only did so because of his encouragement in seeing, you know, Fravor and, and the others come out because it, he it, the, his first his, his the first person he reported it to made it very clear to him that that they had no interest in hearing it. And so he kept his mouth shut after that. Now, was he the only one to see it on this occasion? Yes, he was. He was he was the only one to see it. Um, and and from what I know now, it's very possible. Because I mean, you know, a carrier group has you know several vessels with it, and it's not like they don't watch what's coming underneath the carrier, right? So, you know, I I have every faith that if if his report had been taken seriously, and they had then tried to match his visual up with the telemetry that they were gathering all the time, that we would actually have a multi-point case that had multi-point telemetry. But because of the fact that his his uh, his report wasn't taken seriously i don't think there was any attempt to you know to ma no it's it's also possible that telemetry picked it up and they investigated it and they never knew that some anyone saw it i mean honestly him and and a telemetry team could have been two ships passing in the night they they may have they may have both seen something and not even have ever connected because that right. first basically because he faced the the same negative you know, reaction that that they mentioned in the in the nine page report, um, causing so much problems with with gathering evidence. 
John, we will talk to you on Wednesday night, our next episode with you in two nights' time. We appreciate you taking the time for us on this brand new segment on Spaced Out Radio that we call the Unbiased UFO Report. Let's get to the news.